Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we're expecting some rain that's going to pretty much wash out the rest of the day. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to, to work on a project that can have me inside most of the time. We'll see how it goes. But um, it's going to be a modification to my box scraper since I use that box scraper just as much to move dirt and flatten stuff out as I do to skid logs. So we're going to add some additional elements to it to make log skidding a little easier. So I think it was about a year ago that I added these eyelets, welded these to the front of my bucket so I could wrap chain around it and be able to you know, hook, hook chains and pull logs, pull whatever easier. And that worked out really well. And uh, they've surprisingly not as lousy of a welder as I am. They still managed to stay on there despite uh, some of the strain I put on them. So I have two extra of those and I'm going to add them to the box scraper. So as you can see here, the box scraper has some dents and dings and bangs and bent spots in it because of how I use the chains to wrap around it to, to pull logs. So I want to take those eyelets and, and uh, instead of taking chains and wrapping around the structure, the support structure of the box scraper, obviously I want to be able to go through an eyelet and be able to hook. But when I do that, even with the bucket issues that I have, when I take a chain and just come back through the eyelet and hook, it gives me a good anchor point but I'm also at the mercy of the length of my chain, unless I wrap around multiple times or wrap around multiple times on my log. So I'm going to not only add the eyelet, but I want to make some, I don't know what you'd call them, some uh, chain hooks, basically just metal with slots in them so that the links of the chain can slide down in and I can tighten those wherever I want. So that's what we'll try to do. And the plan is to modify or to add them I want to add those eyelets right here on this part in between, just off center. So I'll add an eyelet here, and then we'll come over here, and we'll add an eyelet there. And that should, shouldn't interfere with my teeth. I can obviously point, point my um, lynch pins a different direction if I need to, but those should fit pretty, pretty well right there. And that will allow me to chain on either side. Now I'm leaving this middle area of the box scraper open for a specific reason and it's a mod that I'm, a big mod that I'm working on that would really make this a nice skitter, incorporate um, a little bit of an A-frame and, and a winch to draw things in. So I'm going to leave that alone, leave it open uh, as we get that figured out, get it engineered and then we'll, uh, we'll use these, these eyelets for kind of a, a half measure for right now for skidding. So I got these D-rings from E-Trailer back when we did our utility trailer rebuild. I bought those because I thought maybe I would add them and then change my mind. But uh, super heavy duty, the exact same that are on the front of the tractor here. So attaching those to the box scraper shouldn't that big, be that big of a deal. Just obviously prep the area and do some spotty welding as I do. But as for the actual hooks, that's where I need to do some of the... the uh, the manufacturing. I don't. I didn't buy these chain hooks. I didn't buy any of those components. So we're going to try to make some out of scrap metal. So of course the first trick is to find some metal to salvage. But as on my place, we've got plenty of stuff laying around. Let's check it out. So one of these days I'm going to find a better place to store this scrap metal, but I have various pieces of angle iron that have not only come in from orders. This was from the uh, wood chipper and some other components that came in. But then there's just stuff I found on the property, being uh, the fact that there was multiple gas well sites, a lot of angle iron, a lot of stuff laying around. But then I also have our livestock trailer frame that my brother gave me that um, probably cannibalized quite a bit of stuff off of that. I've already taken the axle off. That's what's on the Coupe de Ville, the chicken coop, if you don't know what I'm talking about there. And uh, it has a lot of good angle on it. So we may cut some pieces off that. Okay, so I think what we're going to do, we, I say we, I see me, I'm going to salvage some pieces off of this. I'm going to cut the front of this frame. Now some of you may be freaking out, hey, don't waste a good trailer frame. This thing's bent up in a horseshoe. It had a tree fall across it. So the axles were bent and there's some significant damage to the frame. So it's ready just to be cut up and scrapped what I don't use. So I'm going to cut some angle out of that and then I'll detail exactly how I'm going to make these chain holds.
All right, so I thought I'd come over here into the light where it's a little better. Some of you guys are cringing at my setup, and I cringe at my setup too. I just don't feel comfortable doing um, grinding and, and uh, welding or anything like that right inside the workshop. But there's just way too much flammable material around here with the sawdust and all that. So um, edge of the doors, the garage door, and of course it's raining or I'd be outside doing it. Um, so one of these days, we're going to try to figure out a way to make half of the shop welding and, and metal work and the other half woodworking. Or we may just have to, hey, let's build on. Let's have another project, shall we? But uh, anyway, so what I've done, and it looks like a diamond tooth beaver chewed on this, but I took a piece of angle iron off the trailer, you can see there, and I've cut it two and a half inches long, so it'll actually fit nicely into this cross brace on the box scraper, and uh, it's give me the opportunity to weld on all four sides. And then I also, you can see I cut a notch there, see that notch? So that allows chain to drop down in. Let me get a chain. So that will allow me to take a piece of chain, and of course, just drop it down in there and it locks in place. So it locks in between the links. Now, since it's just a piece of angle iron and I end up bending that pretty quickly, then I cut a little gusset reinforcement here that will weld in place just below that notch. And that'll hopefully give it some strength of uh, resistance of the force coming this way. And once I get the D-ring welded on and set all that up, I'll show you exactly the logic or the <laughs> what I think's logic as to why I'm doing this. So the next step is, and I did this times two, so the next step is to just weld this uh, gusset on here, the support, and then we'll see about attaching it to the box scraper. Okay, so none of this is welded yet. It's just laying there to, to give an idea and obviously do a fit. But here's, here's the, what I normally would do. I would normally take my chain and throw it around this thing support bar and chain it. And then again, have slack to pin with. What I want to do is be able to run the chain up through the D-ring. And then whatever length I need, then just toss it down in there. So that gives me, when that's secure, that gives me a nice solid bite. And it actually will, it should put more strain on the D-ring than it should on this tab. Even though I gusseted it, the, the, the most amount of tension should be on the D-ring. So if I do a good weld, then we'll see how well that holds up. And it'll keep from bending this up and breaking it off. So we're just going to duplicate that on both sides, and we'll see how it goes. Give it a test drive. All right, so it's a little bit later in the evening. I wanted to come back down. I have to do uh, evening chores anyway. I want to come da down and check this out and I want to do a test drive. I hope it would stop raining, but it hasn't. We'll do a test drive. I wanted to uh, give it time for my welds to dry. So uh, that way, uh, <laughs> that way it would be strong enough. So I'm going to hitch up to a log here in the log yard and make sure my engineering and my idea actually makes sense and works. Man, it's still in the 40s, but that cold wind and rain, it's got a bite to it. All right, so here we are in the log yard, and let's pretend we're going to move this log. I'm not going to move it too far because this log's actually clean. It doesn't, it's not covered in mud. And if I drag it off my gravel, it's going to get muddy. So we'll just lift it, move it, check it out that far. So normally this is what I would do, I'd just simply come up to the log, throw my chain around it, and then back the tractor up, get the tractor, the box blade as snug as possible to the log, and hitch it up. So you can see I got quite a bit of chain slack left. 
and that's what I'm hoping I can take out of play here. So that did exactly what I hoped it would. We got the chain cinched here. Of course, the majority of the strain is really on the uh, D-ring itself. And we got the log lifted off the ground nicely. If I had been able to center it up, then I could have been in a little bit better line there as well. And that would have worked clean. So let's give it a tug and see if my welds hold. I had to step into the barn. It's uh, starting to rain pretty hard and I don't have the wa uh, waterproof case on my GoPro. I've got the uh, external mic attached, so that makes it susceptible to moisture. So anyway, so it seems to work well. Obviously, I uh, have to get in the woods, jerk it around a little bit, see if I can tear those welds off. I didn't show you a close-up of the welds. Whew. I would normally say the welds look like, and then one of my clever uh, Appalachian euphemisms, but that seems to offend people off and on. So fill in your own blank there. But we'll see if they hold. Well, it's a short one. Appreciate everybody watching. Take care, everybody.